Hey, how's it going everybody? Kramer back with another video and today we're gonna to be talking about a few mistakes that I see a lot of players make You know in the micros and you know I'm grinding the micros daily right now and I see these mistakes going on right now So this might apply to you and if you clean these up, maybe you'll start making more money So I'm also going to try to keep this video short. I know my videos tend to run on a little bit and I'm going to try to keep this one nice and concise. So let's get into it. So the first mistake we'll be talking about is limping hands. Uh, I do have to give a quick disclaimer that I think limping hands is okay only if you have a very fishy game where people aren't raising preflop. Um, every time I limp, which is not often, but I do still do it. Um, the only time I'll do it is if I make sure that I'm in late position and the people behind me don't have a high preflop raise uh, tendency because if they do you're just throwing big blinds away and it's re it just really incentivizes people to start squeezing and it's just it's just kind of throwing money away and it's also you never get to balance your range with strong hands because now if if you play a good player they're gonna see that you only raise strong hands and they'll just like you know try their best to exploit that so it's an exploit ex exploitable strategy which again it can be used but it has to be done uh, seldomly and correctly instead what I want you guys to be doing is coming in with with raises that's what I just mentioned is that I want you to I want you to not be exploitable so again if you're playing some decent players they will notice that you um, you know you always raise when you come in which will just keep your range completely undefined and that's exactly what we want we don't want to be exploited and another reason this is good is that if other people are limping we get to build a pot in position um, against their you know against their weak range which is what we like so the next one is um, bet sizing so this includes so this includes opening size and post flop sizing so what bad players tend to do is they want to keep the pot small when their hand is just okay and they oftentimes undervalue the strength of their hand so for example some people really hate hands like pocket tens and pocket jacks and they might do something like a minimum raise like a, a two big blind raise because they don't want to play a big pot and while that logic is understandable the problem with that is that you are basically telling good players exactly what is in your hand and exactly how to play against you and they can start three betting you very light knowing that you don't want to play a big pot or they can just simply try to outplay you post flop because your hand range is very defined now i'll talk about bet sizing post flop a little bit so one example of people who have very bad bet sizing is some people will donk bet very small as a probe like a probe bet which this is an intuitive play that a lot of people do in poker, but the problem with this is, again, it's it's just defining your range and it's just saying, I have a very weak hand. I hope you don't bet it bet too large because I want to get to showdown. And again, a good player will come along and just barrel you out of this hand often, or they'll just know exactly how much to bet to get you to call. And it's just a weak play in general, especially when they do something like checking checking the turn out of position so if you donk bet the flop get called you check the turn you, you just get bluffed off of this hand so often because you basically said i have an okay hand and i hope that you know i hope that you play friendly against me so the next example of really bad bet sizing is going to be is going to be c betting very large so there can certainly be a strategy that you uh, employ that includes large C bets, but this should be thought out very well. And most people who are doing this at the micros simply aren't simply aren't thinking it through. So the people who tend to C bet very large and do it very often are the players who are loose and aggressive, which I don't anticipate too many players who are watching this channel play that way because people who try to improve <laughs> generally aren't that loose aggressive, but um, I'm, maybe this is a tip on how you can beat these players. The people who C bet very large and have like very high VP, very high C bet frequency, like a hundred percent, you know, like a thirty percent preflop raise. Um, basically, their strategy is to C bet large so that you you get scared and you start um, full overfolding and they win a lot of small pots. But the problem with this is that if you play a decent player, um, you might run into some check raises a lot more often. And that's something that I would definitely do to these aggressive players 
it's scary because you know you, you are building a big pot with a bluff but again someone who c-bets 100 percent of the time it's really hard for them to continue against a tight player um, who just check raised them the next reason this is bad is you also build massive pots without a good reason so if you just c-bet all the time and you're always c-betting really big uh, you can find yourself in these giant pots where it you, you talk yourself into just okay well i guess i'll barrel the turn and then you miss you miss everything you haven't improved and you have jack high and you're just like well i guess i have to bluff at it <laughs> to try to win this pot you you have you find these weird justifications and then by the river, you know, you're just getting called down by ace queen and you just donked off your whole stack for no real reason. So um, I just want you guys to keep in mind that bet sizing can vary a lot and um, betting huge just to bet huge and try to scare people is usually not a very good reason to uh, act that way. So the third one is going to be that people try to think too exploitatively. Now. This is the tendency at small stakes poker, you know, in live or even in the micros that people play so emotionally that you have to start adapting your game to beat them like in that psychological, more emotional way, exploitative. But um, while that is good and you should uh, improve in that way, you also need to balance it with a strong fundamental strategy. And what I find is that most micro players um, they simply just don't have any conceptual understanding of ranges and all they do is play like a hundred percent exploitatively uh, i'm going to give you an example of this if you've seen my videos coaching ryan um, i believe this happened in one of our sessions i think i remember the hand correctly um, ryan was holding queen six of diamonds that he decided to open and he knew one of his opponents was messing around a lot three betting a lot raising a lot calling a lot and so what happened was his opponent three bet him and he decided to flat queen six suited out of position because he knew that his opponent was uh, so crazy. And this is just an example of what I'm saying is like, yes, it's it's good that we know that he's he's a little bit crazy. He's getting out of, out of line, but we have to balance this with having a good range and a decent understanding of uh, fundamentals. Um, just because we know he's messing around doesn't mean that the correct answer to that is to start playing um, weird suited hands just to try to outplay him or something. So what I would do instead if I was in Ryan's position playing against this loose player is I would start calling him down with um, hands that make good top pairs. So like Broadway cards like Queen Jack, King Queen, Ace Jack, Ace Queen, these kinds of hands. I would try to flop top pair, let them bluff me out of a lot of pots, but then I would just take um, these bigger pots where they, they're trying to bluff me out and I just have a really strong calling range. So this is what I mean when I say you have to balance um, exploitative with at least some fundamentals uh, that will kind of carry you along. So that's gonna do it for this video. Um, like I said, I wanted to keep this one short and uh, concise. So I hope you're all running great and making some good money. If you learned something or just simply want to say thank you and support the channel, I would really appreciate a like, that's all I ask. And uh, I guess that's gonna do it. So I'll see you guys later and have a great day.